presence of love is in this place and in all places and in all people. Knowing and accepting this, we bless all people, no matter their race, color, creed, or expression of love. Knowing that there are many paths to God, many names for God, many faces of God, but only one God. And this God is expressing through all creation in many, many ways. We come together to experience and experience the Christ spirit that dwells within each of us. Good morning. Truly, we feel the presence of God with us and within us. In today's meditation, we will center ourselves in the healing energy of stillness. If it's easy for you to do so, I invite you to softly close your eyes and just close out outer distractions for a while. And as you close your eyes, sink into the stillness within. Relax your good body. Quiet whatever busyness is running through your mind. And just be in this moment. Just be in this holy moment of your amazing life. Notice any place where you are holding tension, upsetness, or discomfort in your body. And invite a deeper level of peace into that place and into your whole being, you might say to yourself, I let go, I breathe, I relax, I am safe, because the stillness of the peace of God is mine. Breathe. Breathe easily. Don't force your breathing in any way. Breathe yourself into the quiet of your soul, into the stillness where God's voice speaks to you. In that stillness, there is only love. Let yourself be loved. In that stillness, there is only peace. Let yourself feel that peace. In the stillness, there is comfort for any sadness. Let yourself be comforted. In the stillness, there is companionship for any loneliness. Let yourself be aware of the divine union that holds you near and dear through all time and eternity. In the stillness are the answers to whatever worries you or causes you concern. Remember, that divine love knows your need before you, you do and before you even speak it. In the stillness, there is only God's voice speaking 
its perfect love and care to you. A Course in Miracles says, when you are still an instant, when the world recedes from you, when all meaningless ideas cease to have value in your restless mind, then, then will you hear God's voice. So tenderly God calls to you that you no longer resist the call. In that instant, God takes you home within itself. And you will stay there in perfect stillness. Silent and at peace beyond all words, untouched by fear and doubt, sublimely certain that you are indeed at home in the mind of God. So for these few minutes, let us allow ourselves to be comforted, loved, supported, uplifted, nurtured, and protected on every level and dimension of our life. Allow yourself to feel that. Rest deeply into whatever chair holds you at this moment. Rest deeply into your good body. Invite the stillness and the holy voice of God. We breathe and we receive the gifts of the healing calm within. The healing calm within. By our intention to be still, we let this be the day when the hush of heaven holds our heart. We let this be the hour when we finally drop all resistance to the flow of life and all need to control the uncertainties of our time. As we let go, as we let go and let God, new hope and healing can grow within us. Perhaps where we sit, we even flex our hands, we, we open our hands to receive. And then we just let them be still. Let this be the instant right now where you are. Let this be the instant when your whole awareness is so centered in your relationship with God that nothing else matters. There's nowhere else to be. There's nothing else to do. Nothing and no one can ever separate us from our Creator Source. In the stillness, we remember this truth. Nothing and no one can ever threaten our eternal life 
not even that which we call death. In the stillness, we feel the soothing power of this truth. We prayerfully affirm, let every voice but God's be still in me today. Let every voice but God's be still in me today. And now let us remain silent and enter that stillness. Breathe and let us prayerfully affirm now to everyone in our lives. Maybe even to those who have gone before us into the beyond. Those who are with us now and those who will be, enter our life in the days ahead. And to everyone we hold dear and everyone we have concern for, we affirm, may every voice but God's be still in you today. To those who challenge us right now in our life, we pray. May every voice but God's be still in you today. As we come to the end of this meditation, we make a conscious commitment to take all the reassurances, all the calm, the quiet, the wisdom of the stillness with us, not just into this day, but into the whole week ahead. And dear ones, whatever comes into our lives, we have all that we need from the stillness within to be flexible, to be radically and blessedly resilient. Whatever happens, we know ourselves to be loved and cared for by a power greater than anything on this earth. We breathe and we smile in gratefulness. Amen. Thank you, Louise. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Great. Good. How's everybody else? <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, please join me as we uh, affirm our statement of truth. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, omnipotent. Swing wide the doors, the time is right. Swing wide the doors to let in the light. Bring in the dawn for humankind. Swing wide the doors of this heart of mine. Swing wide the doors, the time is right. Swing wide the doors to let in the light. Bring in the dawn.
I'm not holding it in anymore. I'm gonna shout it out loud. I understand now what I'm here for and what this life is about. It's about love, it's about laughter, it's about comfort and smiles. It's about love, it's about kindness, it's about hearts open wide. It's about love, it's about passion, it's about taking a chance. It's about love, it's about service, it's about lending a hand, about lending a hand. Swing wide the doors, the time is right. Swing wide the doors, the bed and the light. Bring in the dawn for humankind. Swing wide the doors of this heart of mine. There's a voice that I've heard for years. I learned to keep it inside. But now I'm coming in loud and clear. I want a deeper life. It's about love. It's about laughter. It's about comfort and smiles. It's about love. It's about kindness. It's about hearts open wide. It's about love. It's about passion, it's about taking a chance. It's about love, it's about service, it's about lending a hand. It's about love, it's about laughter, it's about comfort and smiles. It's about love, it's about kindness, it's about hearts open wide. It's about love, it's about passion, it's about taking a chance. It's about love, it's about service, it's about lending a hand. About lending a hand. time for the reading of our daily word. The word for August 16th, 2020 is protected. I shine my light and feel protected. Feelings of fear that creep into my life may conjure childhood memories of scary nighttime images and noises. As a child, I may have felt afraid of the dark or startled by an unfamiliar sound. But the morning sun always dispelled the darkness and I realized that there was never anything to fear. I keep that knowledge alive as I let the divine presence within dissolve the darkness of fear and shine the light of comfort and safety. Now. When any darkness descends in my life, I remember the protecting love, presence, and power of God expressing as me. As I attune more fully to my divine nature, light dawns within my consciousness, and I realize that God's protection is always mine. And Psalms 27.1 tells us, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And now it's time to um, share and affirm uh, our affirmation of faith for this month. It is acceptance. I release resistance and experience 
acceptance. Let us know this together. I release resistance and experience acceptance. And so it is. Let us pray. As we gather in the divine presence today, we affirm the truth of God's perfect life and love at work now for the highest good of all. In our unity with one another, we hold the high watch, seeing the truth of our being that we are all children of God. If you are so inclined, we offer a moment for you to speak aloud the names of anyone who is in need of prayer support. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties, and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, sure. Can we have a little more light in the auditorium? <laughs> that would be awesome. You're all just out there in the darkness. Thanks, Carol. Uh, let's see. Is there anybody here for, that's here for the first time? Raise your hand if you're here for the first time. Didn't think so. Uh, if you are watching on Facebook Live for the first time, uh, go ahead and uh, give us a, a, a hello in the, in the chat. And we would love to be able to send you more information about Unity, if you like. Uh, also, uh, for the folks here in the room, turn around, look at everybody. Give them a good wave. Smile through your mask. <laughs> All right. Smile with your eyes. Give eye hugs. All right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, today's speaker is Edward Trout. Uh, but before that, we have a song, right? Yep. I've seen my share of struggle when I thought that I knew best. When I sailed through a storm instead of stopping to rest. And it always seemed the hardest when I made up my stubborn mind. Well, I'm changing my ways this time. Want to be like water coming down the mountain in the shadowy canyons. just gives in and in the end he always makes it home just fine I guess he knows that every storm subsides want to be like water coming down the mountain in the shadowy canyon flowing from pool to stream want to be like water at a hill no more For the cards that I've been dealt, for the lottery I never won, for the heartache that I felt. But it always seems when I let go of expectations and regrets, 
Life has plenty of surprises for me yet. Wanna be like water coming down the mountain in shadowy canyons, flowing from pool to stream. Wanna be like water. Coming down the mountain in shadowy canyon, floor from pool to stream, wanna be like water. Good morning. Good morning. This month, our focus has been here at Unity of Indianapolis on hope and healing. And worldwide, we've had this monthly affirmation as well of I release resistance and experience acceptance. So today, I'm, I'm hoping to look at the intersection of those two things. Two weeks ago, Louise gave us a lovely talk on five different tools or aspects of hope. We had purposeful action. We had trust, which we talked about all last month. We had spiritual community. And then we had vision, which Michael last week talked about so beautifully with I Dreamed of Heaven and the Earth Sang, where we used uh, the song I Dreamed of Rain as a, a reference point for, for how to envision. And flexibility is the last of those five. So that's what I'm looking at today, is that, that sense of flexibility, of being able to be adaptable, changeable, and let go of that resistance. Uh, the song that we just did, Water, by Daniel Neymar, takes in that symbolism of water, right? The water goes for that path of least resistance. Water isn't going to try to fight to go uphill anymore. It's just going down through that canyon, down the mountain. That's how we should be approaching life like water. So with the title Shifting Gears, I thought perhaps it's appropriate to talk about my first car experience. Uh, when I was 16, my parents had agreed to get me a car. Now, this was not a surprise. They had done this with my three older siblings when they, they each became 16 and we were getting their own car so that my parents didn't have to shuttle us around. My brother Bill, the oldest, got a used Cadillac, it was a lovely white Cadillac, power windows, great car. My sister Pam got, uh, again, a used car. It was a big car, we called it uh, Goliath because it was just this giant car. I, I think the point my dad was making was I want her to be protected from all angles, so it was just huge. Year and a half uh, later, my brother Ken got his first car, which was a, a really, uh, snazzy Dodge Charger, red and white, and you know, nice little roadster looking car. So four years after that, I'm ready for my car, and having seen what came before, I had all these expectations. That used car, sure, but something big or fancy or whatever. Well, you know, my parents had already bought three cars. <laughs> they had been putting their three older children through college, so there was not as much money as might have been there otherwise for my car. So we, we kind of had to look at lower expectations, um, finally settling on an old used VW Beetle that was sort of a weird off-white color. Um, not, not cool like, you know, Herbie color. It was, it was this weird putty-ish off-white. But my dad said, I, I know that car is not your first choice. He said, but we'll paint it whatever color you want. I said, okay. So I chose Corvette Blue, because, you know, there's some irony in there. Uh, so I had this Corvette Blue 1963 Beetle as my first car, but it was a stick shift. And all of my training had been on manual, or on automatic, not manual. So I had to learn how to drive this new car. So as I'm sure many other people have experienced, my dad took me to the school parking lot when nobody was there and 
had me test through driving, shifting gears. I killed that car so many times. I ground those gears so much, but eventually got to the point where I could drive the car. So then we were gonna take it back on the road to take it home. I wasn't ready for that, but I knew how to drive it at that point. So I took it on the road with my dad there, got it home safely. Now, mind you, this is a matter of what, 10 miles of driving between school and home, and it's all really country roads. So it wasn't like it was a big danger, but nonetheless, I didn't feel ready and I went ahead and did it. So that was not the experience I thought I was gonna be getting as a 16 year old. I, I thought I would be getting a car that was easy for me to drive and I thought I'd be getting a car that felt fancier and more fun. But in looking back, that car served me so well. It uh, taught me to drive manual, which is still my preferred method. I haven't driven a stick shift for several years now, but I still prefer that. I feel like I have more control, I can, especially in winter. Um, it kind of gave me a cool first car. It didn't feel like it at the time, but when I tell people, yeah, my first car was a 63 Beetle, everybody's like, oh. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, never mind, it had no heat, and you know, there are all kinds of things with that car. Uh, and it gave me a great experience with my father. That day spent learning uh, is something that I couldn't replicate and I still appreciate to this day. So the fact that I really wanted to get a car, but not that one, <laughs> uh, in retrospect, that one didn't matter as much, right? It's like I, I needed to be open to whatever I was gonna get because it was really out of my control at that moment. That flexibility, that ability to say the important thing is getting a car, that got me all those experiences that I otherwise would have completely turned away from. The Buddha says that that, that attachment is the source of our, our discomfort, our suffering, right? That's when we get attached to things, that's where we start having all kinds of problems with suffering. The Unity Minister, Reverend William Engelhart, had an article on acceptance that was posted at Unity Worldwide in which he states that in acceptance, we see the world as it really is. In resistance, we expect to change the past. Now, if you're like me, I hear that phrase and I think, no, I want to change the now. But everything that led to the now is in the past. Right? So we, we want to change how this thing showed up. He goes on to say that when everything is going as we hoped or as we planned, it's really easy to feel like we're in tune with the universe and know that everything is in divine order. But when it doesn't go as we had hoped or planned or expected, that becomes a lot harder to feel like we are in divine order. Most of the time, we are fighting against something. And that something has generally already happened. It's already transpired to bring us to that moment. So rather than fighting against the things that brought us to that moment, it's much more important that we keep that positive attitude, that positive focus on the now and the future. We have to be willing to release our resistance to whatever it was that brought out that resistance in the first place. Our monthly affirmation, I release resistance and experience acceptance. I also like taking that phrase and kind of flipping the last two words. I release resistance and accept the experience. Because that, to me, sounds harder. And I need to do that. I need to accept the experience even when it's not the experience I wanted. We tend to root ourselves in that resistance, right? We, we don't necessarily mean to, but the world sort of puts us in that pushing against things that are coming up against us. At least it feels that way. And I, I believe that is a large part of what Jesus was getting at in John chapter 8. Um, so the passage that I'm really leading up to has a lot that also precedes it in that chapter. This passage comes after Jesus has returned to the temple to, to teach to people there. And they bring him a woman who was an adulterer and she's supposed to be stoned. And he challenges them saying, let he among you who is without sin cast the first stone. And of course, they all disperse. Uh, also, 
right before this in that same chapter, he explains to people, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. And then the part that I'm really leading up to in John chapter 8, verse 31, he says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we should be set free? To which he replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, if you're listening to this with really old-school Christian ears, um, it, it sounds very much like, it's my way or the highway. You either follow me or you're a slave to sin, right? And that means that you're a bad person and you're going to hell and all of those things that we kind of put on this. That's really not what he's saying. What he's really saying is so linked to that earlier statement of you're of this world, I am not. I'm from above this. It's not I'm better than you. It's I'm seeing things from a higher perspective than you are. And if you're going to keep yourself rooted in that lower perspective, then you are going to remain a slave to sin. Now, sin, there, there are multiple words that are used and translated as sin, but the one that is most commonly used uh, is, is the same one here, which is basically meaning to miss the mark. Uh, hamartia is the, the Greek word that is used, and it simply means you missed the mark. You made a mistake. So if, you know, if everyone who made a mistake is slave to their mistakes, well, then... All of us would be but what he's saying is if you raise that consciousness if you look to yourself not as a child of the world a child of Abraham but a child of God then what you see is that mistake all of those things actually lead you to where you are supposed to be and you are not a slave to that you're not a slave to the world you are now seeing things from that higher perspective shifting gears right we have to shift from the worldview to that divine view. We are all children of God. We need to remember that. Going back to Reverend Englehart's article on acceptance, he talks about how our resistance, when it shows up, um, is a signal to something on a spiritual level. There's a reason why spiritually we want to push back and resist that, and we need to be aware of it and bring it to the light and look at it. We need to be able to to let go of that in order to not be bound by it, right? Uh, or as Ken Wilber, the, the author Ken Wilber puts it, when you no longer are resisting present experience, you no longer have a motive to separate yourself from it. Let me say that again. When you no longer are resisting present experience, you no longer have a motive to separate yourself from it you become part of the present experience, which is why we have all shown up in this life. We are the universe pulling back on itself to experience itself. If we resist that experience, we are doing a disservice to why we came here in the first place. So we become one with that experience. We accept the experience and experience acceptance. But we have to start with that release that release of resistance, allowing our gears to shift from the lower material view of things to the higher divine state of consciousness. To be clear, that's not to say that we don't look around at the world as it is and desire to change things. We live in a time of a lot of change, a lot of social upheaval, a lot of things that have been going on for a long time that are sort of coming to a head. There is a place for that, obviously. We don't want to become complacent about treating people poorly, uh, about you know, trying, trying to bring people up, of course. Those, those are changes that we need to make. Um, but that's not the kind of resistance I'm talking about. That is something that is coming from that higher consciousness. And that's what it is really all about. If you are approaching, if you're approaching making a change in the world from a place of anger or hostility or revenge, that's the wrong approach. That, not to say you might not bring some good still about, but it's the wrong approach. The approach is from that highest good, that divine viewpoint. What does the world need, and how can I bring that to be? That's the vision. 
right, that Michael talked about last week, we're holding that vision. I dreamed of heaven, and the earth sang. So that, that higher state is something that we have to always be willing and able to flex up into, even when the world is trying to pull us down. And we have to practice that flexibility constantly. It's, it's sort of like our body flexibility for anybody that is uh, getting older, which should be all of us, right? We're all getting older. Uh, you know that if you stop stretching, stop flexing your body, you start losing some flexibility. Now, not to say you can't regain it, but you have to work a little harder to regain it. The same thing can happen in that mental state and in that spiritual view of, of flexibility. The more you start getting yourself really rooted in the world and rooted in error thought, the more you kind of have to work to pull out of it. If you do it a little bit at a time every day, it makes it a lot easier. When I, when I got that first car, right, that vision was, I want a car. There was flexibility in how it came about. And because of that, I got this great experience. Um, Lynn Schusler Williams, many of you may remember her. She spoke here multiple times. Um, there was one talk that she was giving where her, her example was very much on that flexibility of the goal versus how you get there. She was giving us a visual of, if I'm up here and I want to get back to the back of this sanctuary, I've got all of these seats right in front of me. I can see where I need to be, but I'm going to have to do a lot of climbing over all of those rows of seats. That's a lot of work. I might injure myself. That's a really hard way to go. But you know what? If I'm open to something different, well, look, God has a couple of paths right here. They just don't look as direct to me, but they're so much easier if I'm open to that. That's what we're talking about. You're holding to the vision of being back there, but it may not be the way you're expecting, because maybe that's the hardest way to go. You have to be flexible in how you allow that to happen. Going back to another example from, from my experience, from my life, uh, my sister, Pam, I've spoken of her before, my sister had a vision, which I believe she and my mother came up with together, of taking all of the grandkids to Disney World, but individually, where they each got their own unique trip that was focused on what they wanted to do. So around age eight, eight or nine, because at that point they were really tall enough to do all the things they wanted to do. So each child got their trip, and they were working through all the grandchildren. But my sister, several years ago, got a brain tumor. She ended up passing before they were done with all of those trips. So, when they had started, it was my sister and her partner Marjorie and my mom. Sometimes when my grandfather would go, uh, my grandfather stopped going and then Michael and I started going and we were sort of in for the last half of those trips. So after Pam had made her transition, we determined, well, that last trip still has to happen. That's the vision. So Michael and I and my mom uh, and our, our youngest nephew, Logan, and his older sister, Kendall, and her boyfriend, Matthew, we all drove down to Florida and gave him his trip. It was not the way any of us expected it to happen. It was, it was not the same without my sister, and yet we wouldn't trade that trip for anything. That was such a wonderful time, such a wonderful set of memories. And we would not have had that if we didn't allow for that flexibility that it had to be this way. It had to be Pam in charge of the trip. No, the important thing was the trip, the, the vision. Many of you are aware that nephew just passed away. So, it's difficult this week to look at that loss, to see the youngest child in that group be the first to pass away and not know why. But the flexibility that we see is related to the vision of what that is all about. The vision is the love within our family. 
we hold that love. That is the vision. That is the highest divine order there, is holding the love of the family. We cannot control when somebody might become a new part of the family. And we certainly can't control when they leave us. But if we focus on the vision of love and we allow for flexibility, we can accept the moment. We can accept the experience and realize that the love, the vision, is the important thing that came out of that. Shifting gears. Bring your worldview up to a divine view. Because when you, when you do that, you see and you realize and you know, you know that things are not happening to you. They are happening for you and through you. And you know that truth. And that truth will set you free. And now I, I want us to prepare for meditation, but this will be a slightly different preparation. If I could get the, the praise team up. Last week we focused on the song, I Dreamed of Rain. Um, and leading into this talk, we focused a lot on water. So I want to use some of that symbolism of water and rain as both a symbol of the flexibility by the flow of water, but also the cleansing, right? Because that resistance sometimes clings to us. And you can visualize a cleansing when there is a rain that comes down to clean us. So we're gonna create our own little rainstorm in this room. So I'll explain first and then we'll just do it. And it may be brilliant and wonderful and it may be the silliest, dumbest thing ever. <laughs> um, but we're gonna start just rubbing our hands and then, you don't have to yet, I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for being so ready. We'll start with that. After doing that for several seconds, uh, probably about the time your hands are really getting very warm, uh, we'll start adding some little finger snaps to be the, the starting of the raindrops. We'll transition from that to just some light claps. And then you can take that to slapping your thighs if you want to. If you want to really get into it and stomp your feet and really bring on the rain, we can. Then we'll go back to the, the thighs or the hand claps and back to some snaps and we'll close it out by bringing it back to the, the palms rubbing, all right? So it'll just be like a really quick rain coming through, a little cloud burst, and then it moves right on. All right, are we ready to try this? Yes. Okay. Uh, feel free, by the way, to close your eyes while you do this. Visualize that rain, visualize that cleansing rain and the flow of water. Here we go. And if you would remain seated with your eyes closed, feet on the floor, breathe in deeply. You can imagine that smell of a fresh rain, that very clean, earthy smell. And as you breathe deeply, I want you to focus that breath into the center of your brain, your center of will. See that breath as a silver light coming in right to that center of your brain. And if it feels right, let my words be your words. I am willing to be led by God in all I think, say, and do. I release all resistance and thoughts of limitation, allowing them to be washed away by the cleansing power of spirit. 
I release my attachment to my old fears and thoughts that no longer serve me. And I release my need to control how blessings show up in my life. I accept my divine inheritance in every moment, knowing that I receive more of what I focus on. I keep my vision and I leave it in God's hands to determine how those blessings arrive. I know the truth that I am a child of God and that truth shall set me free. And now let's rest in that truth as we go into the silence. As your focus returns to the room, remember that to experience life is to experience constant change. You are born to be flexible. Living in a state of acceptance means seeing the world as it really is, whereas harboring resistance is to fight with reality and attempt to separate yourself from it. Holding to your vision, you can now decide the best response to whatever situation arises. And so it is. Amen. As we prepare for our offering, I just have a few announcements uh, today. Um, Following the service is our board meeting. Um, <clears throat> we hope to start at 11.15. And then um, also, um, Michael Davis is going to be leading a 12-hour class starting on Sunday, September 6th at 1 p.m. Uh, the class will meet in person and on Zoom each Sunday in September. A law of offering will be accepted so to reserve your spot in class, please email Michael at mdavis1965 at gmail.com. And related to that, we're going to be undertaking um, a textile project for the 12 power art hangings for the sanctuary, uh, one for each uh, power. And so we'll be taking um, donations of all types of fabrics that can be sewn, uh, we want it. Yeah. And um, all of you that are crafty and creative and would like to join in this energy, um, please join us for sure for that. <clears throat> so now is the time to prepare for our love offering. If you are watching online, I invite you to go to our website www.unityofindy.org and donate online or mail a check to Unity of Indianapolis, 907 North Delaware Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46202. At the close of the service, the ushers will be releasing you row by row starting from the back. Please wait until you are released to leave. At that time, please place your love offering in the basket at the back of the sanctuary. We do ask that you do not congregate inside the building for conversations, but feel free to do that outside with proper physical distance. Keep your masks on while in the building, and once the offering is collected, the money stewards will bless the offering. And now take your offering in your hand or visualize your gift. I invite you to hold your offering in heart-centered intention as we affirm our blessing over our love offering. 
divine love working through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am grateful. And as we prepare to end our service with the peace song, uh, I want to remind you, let us do the singing. Uh, if you want to stay sitting in your seat, you can, visualizing our world with everyone, every being standing hand in hand, heart to heart, and soul to soul.